Hello everybody and today we are back to Tiny Island Resort and today we are finally doing my favourite little critter, the Tasmanian Devil. Oh have I waited long to finally build an exhibit for my favourite animal of all time, the Tasmanian Devil. Well and it has been for quite a while since, you know, you've probably seen my island speculation videos, I really wanted the Tasmanian Devil in game. Um, sorry I'm talking really fast because I'm really excited for this new animal. Oh. It is a great addition. Actually, it's a double whammy today because we also are building an enclosure for the platypus, as you can see. So it's going to be well, it, it, it's, yeah, it's it's a double enclosure, but one is like really, really tiny because platypus don't really need that thick of a space. And also, I just felt like since Tasmania is a bit of a bigger island, it just felt a bit too big for just some Tasmanian devils. Um, even the half that the Tasmanian Devils have, I felt like, is a bit oversized. Not that I don't want to give my Tazis a large and wonderful enclosure, since I love them so much, but more just so you can actually see them when you go past. It's not that you get a long time, actually, uh, um, to, to get to see them, since the boat isn't the slowest vehicle, unfortunately. Um, but, and also, uh, platypus are found on Tasmania. It was either the platypus or the wombat, and I felt like having a wombat, they would need more space, and I felt like then the Tazis would have had too little space. So I went for the platypus so I could give them just a bit of the corner of the map. And it also breaks up, it breaks up the island a bit and creates an interesting layout for a habitat. I'm a real fan of how it ended up. Um, um, if you didn't know already, they do live on Tasmania. This is the island of Tasmania. Uh, that's why they're called the Tasmanian Devils, and actually their call um, devil is referred to when the settlers first arrived there on Tasmania. They heard these devilish screams and 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 gurgly sounds, um, which later, well, um, they later discovered it was the Tasmanian Devil, and they also have these red ears, and they have these fangs sticking out of their mouth, so it only felt fitting to call them Tasmanian Devils. They also have the strongest bite force relative to body size for any um, land animal. I would, I think, maybe all animals, but I'll just, I'll just stay safe and safe for, for any land animal. Um, so that's, I, I guess, that's a another um, factor that kind of deserves their name of devil, since they have a really nasty bite. You don't want to be bitten by one because they can actually break through bones, which is. You know, quite um, impressive if you know that animals like hyenas can do that as well, which are specialized for breaking bones. And these small, small dog sized, um, even smaller than dogs, like a small dog, you know, um, sized animals are capable of breaking through bones. It's, it's quite impressive. They have a very powerful bite. But I do recommend if you ever come across a Tasmanian devil that you don't stick their hand near their mouth, since it will probably hurt. Um, the, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the Tasmanian Devils in a bit, but first I want to talk about what I'm actually building here, since um, what I try to do for each of these islands, I've, as I said before, is to try to get an iconic, um, um, not specifically iconic, but just um, environment that is native to the island. Um, I did go a bit off of that kind of um, idea with New Zealand, since I did go for a... a, a um, Lord of the Rings enclosure. If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings build, you should definitely watch it. It's for the little blue penguins. You know, it's not it's not maybe typical um, environment, but Lord of the Rings is filmed on New Zealand at the end of the day. But anyway, this is Tasmania, and when I did some research on iconic Tasmanian landmarks, because I, I wanted to place down a iconic landmark, um, it seems like Tasmania, since it doesn't have that big of a like a, a long history with with people. Um, especially with, with uh, more modern s civilizations, uh, there's not that many like, famous landmarks, but there were some very nice um, natural landmarks. So what I built is this cliffside, which um, I forgot the name. I should have remembered. I'm sorry, but it's a famous cliffside. I'm sure if you're from Tasmania or maybe even Australia, you know this cliffside. Um, it's, it's, it's along the coast and it looks really cool with these very tall uh, rocks. So that's basically what this rock feature is inspired from, from that specific um, landmark in Tasmania. So uh, yeah, that's the inspiration for that. 
Um, you know, let's talk a bit more about the Tasmanian Devils, shall we? Since it is a fascinating animal, and um, as as you already know, obviously, since I've told you before, but uh, it is my favourite animal. And I think an interesting thing about the Tasmanian Devils, uh, something maybe some of you don't know, although I'm pretty sure most of you do, is that the Tasmanian Devil is actually a marsupial. Um, it's the largest carnivorous marsupial alive, although I'm, there's still some people who believe that the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger or Tasmanian wolf, however um, you refer to it as, but yeah, the, the thylacine is, is it, it is extinct, okay, but there's still some of, some of, um, some explorers and biologists, um, cryptozoologists who still believe that the Tasmanian wolf is still alive. Um, I mean, it's definitely extinct, okay? But th this, it's a thought. It could be alive. Who knows? Um, but no, so it, if it weren't for the thylacine, then yes, this is definitely the um, largest carnivorous marsupial, which is quite interesting. For a long time, I thought it was the only carnivorous marsupial, because that's how it, how I always learned it in my, my old animal books, how it's the only carnivorous marsupial, but that's definitely wrong. There are other carnivorous marsupials but they're more like rat-sized marsupials who hunt like insects and stuff, so it's more like insectivorous. But this, this marsupial, this uh, Tasmanian devil, actually hunts large prey. Um, um, things like actually platypus, they do eat platypus um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. And the Tasmanian devil is, uh, it's, it's, it's actually endangered, like a lot of animals. But this is one of those rare occasions where the humans aren't the main cause, although humans do affect um, Tasmanian devil distributions as well. Um, like all animals, you know, humans are just the big bullies when it comes to endangered status. But in this um, special, although not really nice, um, circumstance, the Tasmanian devil is suffering from a um, disease. Um, the disease is called, I think, the Tasmanian face tumor disease. Um, something along those lines. At least that's more of the, um, the trivial. At least that's more of the trivial name for it. So uh, actually, let me Google it really quickly. But it's yeah, it's the it's basically a disease that um, that causes the Tasmanian devils to uh, well die. Really, it's it's really bad. I don't know the details of the disease, but I do know that it, there's a disease going around and it's very um, infectious, and uh, it's it's killing a lot of the Tasmanian devils and it's really putting pressure on the population of the devils. Now on the other side we are um, also building for the platypus and I can talk a bit about the platypus. It's not one of the new animals, it's um, it's actually from the wetlands pack a couple of, well, I think a year ago now, but um, the, the platypus is not a marsupial, um, it's also not a placental which is one of the other uh, mammalian orders. And actually, it's the third big mammalian order, which is the monotremes. And if you don't know what a monotreme is, let me just explain what these three big families or like groups of um, of mammals are. So most mammals, including you and me, and most of the mammals that you know, your dog, your cat, most of the animals in the zoos, like giraffes and elephants, they are all called placentals, which means they have a placenta. Um, which is obviously an organ within the um, the womb, right? Um, obviously only the females have it, but it just means that the species have a placenta. Now, the other big group of mammals is the marsupials, and I'm sure you all know that marsupials are um, not as diverse, but they are also a relatively diverse group of mammals which have a um, pouch, um, which the Tasmanian devil is one of them. To just to remind you of some more famous ones, for example, the kangaroo and the koala. But also wombats, Tasmanian devils, and a whole lot of other ones like um, the quokkas even, tree kangaroos, you know, um, the, the ones in America like the opossum. But most marsupials do live in the um, Australian um, continent, with some exceptions, like I said, in um, um, North America with the opossum. But the third group is the the, um, well, which the platypus belongs to is the monotremes, and um, a monotreme is basically it's a more of a primitive order of mammals, which is a group of mammals that is able to um, produce milk and actually lay eggs as well. They're an egg-laying mammal, so it, it's a more of a primitive group. But yeah, they 
do produce milk as well, so they do, um, you know, care for their youngs um, with milk. Although they do sweat it out of their skin instead of having um, separate organs to produce the uh, milk. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoy this speed build, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.